as we go through 100th anniversaries of significant parts of the Great War, and particularly we're coming up to the 100th anniversary of Canada's great victory at Vimy Ridge in April of 1917. Obviously, we remember, as we do every Remembrance Day, the sacrifice, the horror of war, the sadness of it. But precisely because war is so bad, we shouldn't forget, including thinking about World War I, to examine the causes of war and ask how do we get ourselves into these things? How could we prevent war? And December 8th is an important date when thinking about that because on December 8th of 1912, the German High Command and the Kaiser held a war conference in which essentially they planned out the First World War. They took a hard look at their strategy, at their logistics, and they made a number of important determinations about the war that some of them wanted right then. The Army Chief of Staff von Moltke said, we should start the war now. But the Navy didn't want to because they weren't ready, including in one critical respect. The head of the British Navy, Jackie Fisher, actually predicted that war would come in the summer of 1914. And the reason that he reach this conclusion was very simple. That's when the Germans would have completed the Kiel Canal, which would let them get their dreadnoughts back and forth between the Baltic to keep an eye on Russia and the North Sea, where they wanted to defeat the Royal Navy and establish Germany as a world power by crushing Britain. And it is these German ambitions and the operational planning that resulted from these decisions that caused the war. And that view, after World War I ended, it became very unpopular, the notion that it had been caused by German militarism, that any one side had caused it. It was taken more as an indictment of Western civilization, that somehow all these high ideals, this talk of king and country and God and Christendom, had been revealed as an appalling fraud by the fact that countries, and the Germans had got mit uns on their belts and so on, that countries who all professed attachment to these ideals could get into a conflict this bloody and brutal and futile and couldn't get themselves out of it. But as I argue in my documentary, The Great War Remembered, World War I lasted as long as it did and claimed so many lives, not because of the follies of man, but because of their ingenuity, of the incredible success of the first and second industrial revolutions in creating mass production, new and better weapons, and the skill and energy of men on both sides in figuring out how to fight the war, from privates and sergeants and captains, all the way up to, yes, generals, including figures like Canada's Arthur Curry, whose brilliant tactical innovations were pivotal in the success at Vimy Ridge. The war wasn't caused by industrialization. The war wasn't caused by high ideals. The war was caused by the way in which the German government, and particularly the Kaiser, who was a dreadful man, by the way, after the war, he suggested that there was a need for a solution to the Jewish problem that might well involve poison gas. I mean, he wasn't Hitler, but he wasn't as far from Hitler as a lot of people would like to think. It was their assessment of their dilemma, that they had France on one side, Russia on the other, and also this kind of nasty vainglory that we must crush Britain, take our place in the sun. What did Germany need defeating Britain on the high seas? What contribution could that make to world order or decency? When you think about Pax Britannia and all the good things it brought, including an end to the international slave trade. So yes, the problem fundamentally Men have heads, they make choices. It was the choices made in Berlin that caused the war. And it was, you look at that conference on December 8th of 1912 and the kind of things they planned, increasing uh, production of submarines, the uncivilized nature of U-boat warfare, which did originate primarily with Germany, to speed up the preparations for their army and their navy so that they could attack all their neighbors and do them in and take their place in the sun at the expense of everybody else. That's what caused the war. So let us not forget War is a terrible thing, but it is not the worst thing. The worst thing is to fail to stand up to aggression and get conquered because you're not ready to fight when you finally realize you have to. It nearly did happen in 1914. It nearly happened in 1939. It is a pattern of Western democracies not to take aggression seriously enough. So when you're remembering the Great War and the sacrifice and the loss and the horror, remember also the cause of the war because it was, in fact, German aggression and it was planned in great detail, what happened in the fall of 1914 was planned in detail in Berlin on December 8th, 1912. And that is where responsibility for the war actually lies. 
If you're enjoying these broadcasts, please visit my website. That's www.johnrobson.ca. Make a contribution. Check out our latest documentary, The Right to Arms. And also make a pledge to help the rebel with it, the big plan to build a better studio, more facilities, employ more staff, and continue to bring you a perspective on the news that you're not going to get anywhere else.